Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Well, this morning we are very, very privileged to have for our Sunday school speaker uh, someone that, you know, I would probably say is probably one of my favorite preachers, if not my favorite preacher, Dr. Bill Rice the third. And uh, he came to, to, to Sunday school here this morning, which is really surprising for me. I invited him, but I didn't really think he'd come. And so here he is. Uh, let me just say, we'll introduce the Rices, and of course they'll explain their purpose in being in South Florida, being with us here today in the morning service. Uh, but let me just uh, take just a minute and introduce to you Dr. Bill Rice. And uh, this is a, there, there are three generations right here. And, but you didn't bring the dog. Dogs at home. Okay, but you call dogs grandchildren? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. So it's Dr. Bill the third, and we'll get introduce you just a little bit more to him. Beside him is uh, Mary Rice, his wife, probably one of the most patient uh, individuals in the world. And so we're very privileged to have them with us this morning. We'll introduce Dr. Will, and so and they'll they'll talk about the Bill Rice Ranch and why they're here today in, in, in the service to follow. So come on, Dr. Bill. And please speak for us. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Just quickly, I want to be sure you know Mary. So, pal, would you stand up so they can see you? It's my wife, Mary. And then Will will introduce... Uh, his wife, Cena, and his son, Weston, when he gets up to preach in the morning service. So you'll meet, you'll meet all of them. It's good to be here. How many of you were here last year when Mary and I were here? Can we see your hand? Good. How many of you were here the night of the AFC Championship <laughs> <laughs> three years ago uh, when Mary and I were here? You were here, weren't you? I was here, yes. Am I okay with this? Yeah, the pastor sat right over there. He's the one that said, go Broncos. <laughs> okay. Uh, two things quickly. There will be an offering today, or in the offering, you can designate uh, to the Bill Rice Ranch Campership Program. Uh, deaf young people come to the ranch and they have since 1953. My dad and mother began a camp in Tennessee called Bill Rice Ranch, and they began it because of dad's concern and mother's burden for winning deaf people with the gospel. My sister is deaf. So uh, Betty's older than I, and she lives in uh, El Paso now. But in 1953, we had our first week for the deaf. You'll see a video in the morning service about this this morning. And all the deaf that come, come free of charge. Amen. You know, when you need help to go to school, you get a scholarship. So at the ranch, we have a campership for those who come for the deaf weeks, and they come free of charge. And we need to raise about $40,000, $45,000 a year for the campership program at the ranch. And so that's why we've come here. We hope to raise all 45000 in the church today. Um, we may have to sell the pastor's house to do the best we can. Seriously, I'm being silly. I probably shouldn't be, but uh, um, you'll have an opportunity to give today uh, to the campership program, and I hope you will give. If you write a check, make it out to the church, and that way the church will have a record of your mission giving, and you will as well. That will be great. On the table in the back, there's some books from the ranch. These do not belong to Will and Cena. They don't belong to Mary and me. They belong to the Bill Rice Ranch. I want to mention two books. One is First Light. This is Will's devotional. We only have two left. So uh, normally these books are $12, but this morning they're $40 a piece. <laughs> two, isn't that the way you do it in South Florida? There's not much room, so you, you charge more. Right. Uh, we have two left, and this is great. Um, it has 365 devotions. They're well done. They're logically presented, and they're scriptural, obviously, and they really are a help. Then there are four or five. I get confused. I think there are four. I call them white books, but they're just books on current uh, questions in our society. This one is tweets, posts, and pens. And it's about the internet and the wise use of it. So that's back there. And there's one back there on the assurance of salvation. There's one back there on friendship. 
and uh, we also have a Snickers bar for sale at the book table. I don't know what this is doing up here. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we would sell that. Too. Okay, so that's all back in the back. You got the 12th chapter of Romans? Look down, if you would, please, at verse 17. Amen. Recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto the wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Um, therefore, if an enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him a drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Morning, folks. We're in the 12th chapter of uh, Romans. So we're going to look at that. All right? Father, help us as we look at this wonderful passage this morning, I pray. And we ask this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. The Bible says here, avenge not yourselves. That is, don't get even with people. Uh, have you ever heard of a fellow say, I don't get mad, I just get even? <laughs> All right, so don't get even with people. Now, the passage is not talking about defense. It's not saying that it's wrong for an individual or for a nation to defend itself. Sometimes good people read this passage, avenge not yourselves, into get place in the wrath. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will obey. Therefore, if an enemy hunger. Sometimes people read this and they say, you know, um, violence is always wrong, and therefore defending oneself violently is wrong. But this passage is not dealing with that. Now, there are many people, we call them pacifists, good people who believe that war is wrong because it's violent. Well, there's no question that war is a terrible thing. There's not, no question about that. And so for the people who believe that it's wrong for one nation to defend itself, they sometimes look to this passage, but that's not what this passage is dealing with. So you can't read Romans chapter 12, verse 17 and following and say, it's wrong for us to go to war. You may think it is, but you can't show that from this passage. It's not wrong for one to defend himself. It's not wrong for a person to defend himself however he needs to do so. Um, you say, Brother Bill, if Brother Ryan, that Brother Price, were up at your house <laughs> in Tennessee, and you saw him climbing in the back window to steal some of your valuables, <laughs> would you shoot uh, Brother Price? Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm a Baptist, and so yes, I would, I would uh, obviously shoot Brother Price. Uh, probably never have to do something like that, but the point is, if a person needed to defend himself in any situation, you cannot say that's wrong from this passage. So the passage is not saying it's wrong to defend yourself. The passage is not saying that it's wrong to punish evildoers. In fact, Romans says the exact opposite. Sometimes I think we get confused on prison. We say, you know, uh, I, I don't think we should try to get even with people who have committed crimes. Well, that's fine, except that uh, evildoers do need to be dealt with, and this passage is not saying that it's wrong to put someone in jail. Now, it's terrible to do that, is it not? I mean, it's terrible for somebody to have to go to jail, and it's terrible for somebody to have done something that would send him to jail. But the Bible is not saying it's wrong to send people to jail. So number one, it's not saying it's wrong to defend yourself. Number two, it's not saying it's wrong to punish. Number three, it's not saying that vengeance is wrong. Now, it's it, kind of easy to miss this, but a lot of times people say, you know, you should never be vengeful. Vengeance is a sin, and vengeance is wrong. Well, you may think that, but vengeance is not always wrong, because the Bible says here that God himself is a vengeful God. Vengeance is mine. I will repay Seth the Lord. It's 
That's exactly what the passage says. So it's not saying here that a country can't defend. It's not saying here that you can't defend. And it's not saying here that vengeance is wrong. Well, you say, Bill, if it's not saying that vengeance is wrong, what is it saying? Well, it's saying vengeance is wrong in your hands. See, you're not supposed to be vengeful, and I'm not supposed to be vengeful, because God is. So the whole point of the passage is that uh, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. That's what the Bible is saying here. That God settles scores. God takes care of that. So vengeance is God, but vengeance is not yours and it's not mine. I am not to be vengeful. I'm not uh, to be a person wanting to get even or to pay back. Well, um, you say, why not? If God is a God of vengeance, and He is, is He not? Okay. And if God repays evil, then why can't I? I love the Lord. You do too, don't you? Okay, so why can't I be vengeful? Well, there are several reasons. Let's look at a couple. Number one, I don't always see things, uh, let me say this, logically or as they are. In other words, all of us have a bias. Yes. All of us have a bias. So uh, I may think somebody's wronged me when, in fact, he hasn't. See? See? Um, and so, uh, God doesn't want me to be vengeful because I don't always see things as they are. Number two, God doesn't want me to be vengeful because if I'm vengeful, that never settles anything. It only continues the unhappiness and the evil doing. When I was a kid, how many of you have a... Uh, a sibling, a brother or a sister, you know, just a little younger, a little older. Okay. When I was a kid, Pete, my brother, was a year and a half younger than I. He still is, by the way. I don't know maybe if you were wondering about that. But uh, Pete's an evangelist. He lives in Arizona. And Pete and I were a year and a half younger. And from third grade, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, so six years, Pete and I traveled with dad and mother in revival work. We would have revival campaigns. They were two weeks. We'd start on a Tuesday and go through two Sundays. And Pete and I, it's going to be hard to believe this, but Pete and I actually sang. <laughs> in fact, when, when Kay traveled with us before she had to go to high school, when Kay traveled with us, the three of us sang in meetings. And they called us the Rice Krispies. What else? What else? Of course. So, Kay and Pete and I sang. In fact, we were paid. This is funny. We were paid. Pete and I got 50 cents a week. And Kay got 75. And Kay got 75 because she smiled when she sang. And Pete and I did because it is funny. Dad told that every week in every revival. He would say, the kids are on the payroll. Kay makes 75 cents, and Bill and Pete make 50 cents, and uh, Kay makes 75 because she <laughs> smiles, and Bill and Pete will make 50 cents because they don't. And I never caught on. <laughs> <laughs> I could make 25 cents more a week if I would just smile. But anyway, okay, so um, we used to travel, and we had a Hudson. Anybody here know what a Hudson is? Okay, well, it was the largest sedan um, in its day, this is in the 50s, and a really wide back seat. So there was room for dad and mom in the front, and sometimes Ella Zare, a singer that traveled with us, and then we had a great dame <laughs> that traveled with us, and another critter I won't even mention, and uh, Pete and I in the back seat. So we had a game we called Hit Last. Have you ever played this game with a brother or a sister? Or here's what would happen. We'd be sitting in the back seat. And usually it was Pete, I think, started it. Uh, Pete <laughs> would, for no reason, hit his older, kinder, more gentle brother. Well, of course, I couldn't let that go, so I would hit Pete back. And then I would say, got you last. And then Pete would hit me, 
and say, I got you last. And then I would hit Pete and say, I got you last. And he would hit me, then I would hit him, then he would hit me. And this went on, you know, for long periods of time. And I know you're thinking, you know, when you made long trips, one day or one once we had a meeting in Canada and the trip was four days. I remember that. Four days on the way to Canada. So you say, Brother Rice, what did you do in the backseat of the Hudson for four days? We played hit last. So I would hit me and he would hit me. And um, finally, Mother, sitting up the front, would turn around and utter a sentence that began and ended with the same word. She would say, quote, Both of you boys, stop that right now, or I'm going to spank you both. Okay, and I used to think to myself, that's unfair. I mean, Pete started it, I'm sure he did. Uh, and these things have to be taken care of. And so, uh, I, here's what I wanted Mother to say. I wanted her to turn around and say to Pete, my younger brother, Pete, you worthless excuse for a younger brother. You unthinking, unkind rabble rouser. How dare that you would smite your older, kinder, better looking, more intelligent, and more thoughtful brother, Bill Rice the third. that's me, um, instead of letting him pound on you. You stop that right this minute, or I'm going to give you a spanking. But she never said that to me. She said to both of us, both of you stop that, or I will spank you both. Well, the problem with hit last is you can't end it. If somebody hits you and he shouldn't have, and you hit him back because he hit you, you don't end it. You just extend it. You just make it so that he hits you. By the way, think of the logic here. He hit me. That's wrong. Nobody should do that. It's unjust that anyone should strike a fellow traveler. Therefore, I will hit him. <laughs> See, it doesn't make any sense, does it? So the problem is, with hit last, you can never end anything. You just you continue. Uh, Mary and I have a friend. He, he lives in California. He's retired now, I think. But he lives in California. And uh, his brother lived in West Virginia when this happened. And uh, they used to play hit last, too. Uh, but they changed the rules when uh, the younger brother moved out to California uh, to speak last. And so the boy in California would call the boy in West Virginia. They actually did this. He'd call him long distance, and he would say, speak last, and then hang up. <laughs> then not answer the phone for three days. <laughs> All right. So how do you end speak last, and how do you end it last. Well, you can. So somebody may wrong you, and you may get even with them, but all you are doing is making it so that they can get even with you again. Mm -hmm. have, have you noticed, um, I don't want to be unkind, I, I love Florida, uh, <laughs> but have you noticed the drivers in South Florida? What? <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Preaching. Yeah, thank you, sir. All right. The drivers in South Florida, um, they may not know how to drive well, but they really know how to work the well. You notice that? So I've had people get mad at me <laughs> on the last couple of weeks when I was driving for no reason, people. I was a very, very kind, considerate driver, and they get mad at me. But the funny thing is when they do that just instantly within my gizzard, the first thing I want to do is get them back. You know, I want to say, oh, you think I was in your lane a little bit? Well, what do you think of this? And then drive right in front and slam on the brakes. That's not what I want to do. The problem is, you can never win at that because it never ends. All right, so God says, avenge not yourselves, neither give place to wrath. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So the deal is, your not supposed to avenge yourself. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? Um, well, the scripture here says, if thine enemy, that's the guy that's hurt you, if he hungers feeding, if he thirsts getting to drink, 
for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So it says here, if he's hungry, feed him, and if he's thirsty, give him to drink. Now, what does that mean? What does the Bible mean when it says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him? Now, uh, like, like Brother Price, I went uh, to Bible college four years, and so, you know, when you go to Bible college, you understand things that mere mortals may not be able to understand. So, I've learned this. In this, this phrase, if he's hungry, feed him. Uh, the, word, the word feed here is very interesting. Um, it's uh, in the Dominican uh, secondary plurality. And you see, what does that mean? I don't know, I just got made it up, so I don't know. Okay, all right. When it says, if he's hungry, feed him, what it actually means, you know, you have to learn these things from the Bible. What it actually means is, actually, literally, if you have an enemy and he's hungry, feed him. <laughs> That's what it actually means. Okay, same thing with if he's thirsty, give him to drink. So the deal is, you have an enemy, and he's thirsty, give him to drink. Everybody's going to be frightened if after the service, one of you says to another one in this church, hey, may I get you a glass of water? <laughs> it may kind of stir people. But here, here's the point. If he's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him to drink. Now, don't get pious about this. Yes, that is so true. If thine enemy doeth hunger, feedest thou him. It's literal. So the point is, have you ever have you ever provided food for somebody who wronged you? Have you ever done that? Probably not. I don't know that I have. It's not it's not a common occurrence, is it? So the point here is, if somebody wrongs you, take care of him. Not take care of him as in get even, but take care of him as in see to it that he has food and drink. Now it can't be more clear, can it? See, and before you get pious and say, yes, the church should provide food. That's not the issue. The issue is, have you ever taken anybody to McDonald's that mistreated you? Of course, McDonald's might be vengeance. <laughs> but, uh, you get the idea, right? Have you ever taken somebody um, to a restaurant or to a Publix or provided food for them when they had wronged you? See, that's what the passage is saying. And here's what it says. This is interesting to me. Um, when you do this, you'll pour coals of fire on his head. Now, I, I joked about uh, education. I, this really does bother me, and it really does. I've come across this in the last couple of weeks. I think education, if we're not careful, gives us a way to talk around simple, direct mm -hmm. Bible oh, truths. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somebody says, I've heard this on more than one occasion. You know, uh, in the Bible lands back in the day when this was written, they didn't have much wood, which is true. They didn't then, they don't now. So in order to have a fire in your house, you had to uh, be very careful uh, with the wood. So uh, when a neighbor had nothing but coals left, he would bring coals, coals fire, over to your house and give them to you so you could uh, begin a fire again. See, so you could continue and be warm in your house. This is for people that live in Minnesota. Uh, so you could be warm in your house. But that's not what it says. And if you just take literally what it says, it makes all kinds of sense. You know what I think it means? I think it means having a basket like this of coals. And there's your enemy. And here's the coals. And here you are. And you go... Just like that. <clears throat> okay, except doesn't it say, don't avenge yourself? Yeah. But it says, if you will 
do right by your enemies, it will heap coals of fire in his head. Now, let me ask you a question. According to what we've seen this morning, is vengeance wrong? No. All right. Who is the one that works vengeance? God. Okay, it's God. So you take care of the hamburgers and Cokes and uh, the fried chicken and the steak. You take care of that and God will take care of the coals. Yeah. And that's the way it works. See, Avenge not yourselves. Don't give place to wrath. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think you've ever seen this take place where somebody wronged somebody else and that somebody else was pretty kind to the wrongdoer and it appeared that God dealt in the life of the wrongdoer? Have you ever seen that? Yes. You know one of the joys of being 76 is I have seen that. Yeah. And I've seen it more than once. And I'm not thinking of people who wronged me. I'm just thinking of people who wronged folks and the folks that they wronged were gracious about it. And God took care of the evildoer. See, um, don't return evil for evil is what the passage is saying, but return good for evil. See, because if you and I will return the good for evil, God will take care of the rest. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good says the last verse. That's quite fascinating. Don't be sucked in with evil, but overcome evil with good. So in the passage, it's not wrong to defend nationally or personally. It's not wrong to punish. Vengeance is not wrong. Vengeance is only wrong in my hands. My responsibility is to, as best I can, live peaceably with other men. So it's my responsibility to do right by people, even those who have wronged me, and God will take care of them. Now, if that really worked, it'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So what does it take on your part to make it work? And, and the answer is simple faith and obedience. Yeah. Just do it. See, um, If your brother hits you instead of playing hit last, uh, be be kind and be gracious and let God take care of the evildoer. Make sense? That's exactly what it's saying. Uh, let me tell you a quick story and our time will be gone, all right? When I was a kid, uh, my dad had a radio broadcast and it wasn't it wasn't necessarily national, but it was on a few stations. And he had this radio broadcast. It aired live on Sunday mornings, and then it may have been, I think, recorded and sent elsewhere. But anyway, my dad had a radio broadcast. And on Sunday morning, it was at 9 o'clock, and many churches, most churches, start at 9.45 or 10 for Sunday school. So my dad would sometimes, at the end of the broadcast, say, now in your city, there's so-and-so church, and that's a good church. Let me encourage you to go there this morning. Well, there was one church in one of these cities that really got upset with my dad. It wasn't just with my dad, but it was with, uh, you, you, you won't know these people, but Lee Robertson and John Rice and some other people. So this preacher really got upset with uh, these men. And in the case of his saying things about these men, he included my dad. And he said some, I don't remember, I was only seven or eight at the time, but um, he said some really rough things about my dad. Well, when I was maybe 14 or 15, I'd go with dad to make the broadcast. And uh, in fact, Kay and Pete and I would sometimes go and he would question us, howdy folks, welcome. Glad to see you here. Just make yourself at home, sit down, whatever. The, the most expensive seats are in the back. <laughs> so you can sit wherever you'd like and we're glad to see you. Any rate, so I would go with Dad to make the broadcast. And I remember, I think I was 16 or 17. My dad said on the broadcast, hey, by the way, you people that live in this certain town, and he named it, uh, here is this church over here, and it's a great church, and the pastor there preaches the Bible, and you ought to go to that church. Well, it was a church. 
It was this preacher that had been mean to my father and had said things about my dad. <clears throat> and so uh, after the broadcast, I said to my dad, I said, Dad, why in the world are you nice to this guy? Hmm. You know what he said about you, and you know what he said about uh, the ministry of the ranch, and you know what he said about Uncle John, you know what he said about whoever and so forth. Why in the world are you nice to this guy? Here's what my dad, my dad had a smile, he had a little crooked smile, that he would smile whenever you asked him a question and he was about to give you an answer that would put you in your place. <laughs> you have a dad like that? So he had this kind of wry smile. And he said, well, Bill, let me ask you something. I said, okay. He said, does brother, and he named the guy, does brother so-and-so preach the Bible? Yes. Does he preach the gospel? Yes. Does he get people saved? Yes. Well, don't you think it'd be good for people to hear the Bible and be taught by the Bible and uh, for people to be saved? He said, yes, Dad, but he said bad things about you and mother and yada, 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 you know, and so on and so on. He said, well, I know that, Bill, but don't you think it'd be good for us to encourage people to be benefited by his ministry and let God take care of him? And that's when I got the smile, you know, like, I got you, Bill. And so I said, well, yes, sir, I guess so. Well, now my father is in heaven, and so is that dear brother. And um, when my father died, I had the responsibility of helping uh, guide the direction of the ministries of Bell Rice Ranch. This is always tickled me. Uh, one day I was uh, a counselor. They called me ranch foreman, uh, camp foreman, because I took care of counselors. And we only had five or six or whatever. One day I was a counselor, and the next day I was <laughs> president of the Bill Rice Ranch. And I had, for me, an enormous amount of responsibility. But you know what I didn't have? I didn't have a fight with a pastor who had wronged my dad. Hmm. See, I did ah, well, he, he was not good to my dad. I'll spend the rest of my life taking care of that guy. No, I didn't do it. I didn't see him. Um, I literally did not see him. I went to school with his son, um, and he came to Kay's funeral. This preacher, very kind, uh, very gracious. And you know, it was great to see him. It was great to see him. Unfortunately, the church that he had ran in the seven to nine hundreds, uh, slowly began to go down through no battle that he had with anybody that I'm aware of. But it went from uh, seven, eight hundred down to 125. Now, it was still a valid church, still a good church. We were still for it. I have preached in that church. Brother Will has. Um, other people from the ranch have. And I don't have an ongoing battle with a man I don't need to have a battle with. Are you following this? Because it was settled before my dad died. Um, in fact, um, Dad named some stuff on the ranch for this brother. And I, as I mentioned on the radio, he'd say, Brother so-and-so is a good preacher. You need to go there and hear him preach. And uh, that was quite a life lesson for me. Would it be for you? It was very important, don't you think? Uh, avenge not yourselves. Neither give place to wrath. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger feeding. If he thirst, give him to drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You know what this is? This is a matter of God's people trusting God to honor what he said and to live in light of it and expect God to do what I can and what you can and just trust God to take care of us in his own way and time. Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you for loving us.
thank you for the Lord Jesus and thank you for salvation by grace through faith. And thank you, dear Lord, that any battles we're involved in need to be battles in defense of the faith, our uh, battles in what we would call uh, enriching the kingdom, but we don't have to always fight people that may have wronged us. And so help us, this is not easy for us, Lord, but help us to grow knowing this and to believe it and to live in light of it and to trust you to do what needs to be done in the case of any wrongdoing that someone may point our way. And we pray these things in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. Amen. Are we finished? We're finished, folks. See you at church. God bless you. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.